Hi everyone, this is Coach Tanner Tanavoli. I am a motivational and lifestyle coach uh, living out here in beautiful British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. And I met Crystal through Anthony Robbins' seminars and our friendship has gotten stronger since. And when she asked me to participate in this e-course, I was mostly honored and very happy to do so. And uh, she actually left my hands open to pick the topic that I want, which is amazing. The topic I actually chose today to speak about is not something that people talk about on a daily basis. It's actually something that people try to avoid to talk about. Um, I'll tell you the reason why I chose it in a bit. And the topic is fear. I believe the reason why many people do not live a fulfilled and wholehearted life because fear has taken over most of their decisions. Fear takes over their actions. And most of it is because they don't know where it came from or they don't even recognize the fear when it's happening. And I wanted to discuss that today and give you some tips and uh, some exercises that helps you understand it better and overcome it. I will also be talking about love, which everybody loves talking about. I'll be talking about love. I'd like to give you a little bit of a comparison towards the end of what fear actually does and what love does for you. I'm sure you all know what love does for you and what fear does, but I want to get into the detail of it and in the psyche of it. And I encourage you to do the exercises that will come up shortly uh, in a different section to help you understand yourselves better. And once you have a map of yourself, and once you know what the problem is, many people don't know what the problem even is, once you detect the problem, after that, the solution comes easy. It's way more so. The hardest part is figuring out the problem. So we're going to do that today. So stick with me for the next 15, 20 minutes. I'll try to make it as fun, exciting, and educational as possible. So with that being said, let's begin. Is fear. What's the definition of it? Fear is an emotion that takes over us when danger is present. Remember, danger is present. Let's say you're walking through a path and also a tiger who jumps in front of you and what do you do? Your heart is beating faster, you want to protect yourself, you're thinking quick in that moment. So there's two things you can do when danger is present. You will either fight or flight. And hopefully in this case, you'll be flighty, not fighting. You run away from the tiger, you protect yourself, and that's the right thing to do. Let's say fear pops up again. This emotion pops up because there's other dangers around in everyday lives. What are they? There's not a tiger jumping in front of us on a daily basis. What are the dangers in our everyday lives that we experience that brings the fight or flight situation up again? There will be incidents as heartbreaks, humiliation, rejection, and so much more that causes us to build up a shield. We do not want to feel hurt again. We don't want that kind of pain again. We either fight it or we flight it. So how do we build these shields around us? Let's say as a child, you were made fun of, either by a teacher or other students or some friends. They belittled you, they made fun of you. What you do instead, you build some boundaries on yourself. You do not want that to happen again. And as a result, you use such tools as, I will not show emotions to anyone, I will not give in to that kind of friendship anymore, and there's so much more that you decide to do or not to do, so that will never happen to you again. And that is because of fear of that danger, of that pain. You do not want it to happen again, therefore you constantly keep using it. This for many people, because it happens so early on or it happens in a situation and you get over it and you move on with life, most people don't realize that the tools that they're building around themselves, it will actually show up in other areas of life. It will not just be in that kind of situation. Let's say this child grows up and wants to get back into society and have some friends and let's say they have some great friends and one day while they're joking around one of their friends makes a little fun in all good faith of their friend. What happens then? Triggers. All the triggers become alive and all of a sudden there's danger around. And when there's danger around, what do you do? Fight or flight. You take the tools out, you either fight back or you get away from it. They shut down, they turn away, and then there's more. They go even a step further. 
they self-judge, doubt, they turn on themselves. For another example, let's say you've been in an amazing relationship in the beginning. You've been having so much fun. This relationship is off the charts good. It just feels good. You just want to do everything for that person. And he or she wants to do everything for you. And then what? Things turn. Old triggers come back from your side and their side. And there comes to a point where that feeling comes back again. This is not good. This is dangerous. So you get out, you break up, you go through the pain, you go through the hurt, you get back up and you search for love again. People need love. They need love. It's not just wanting it. That's why everyone wants love. Everyone is searching for love. Love of a man or a woman, love of a friend, love of parents, love of friends. People constantly go back on track. Why do people give up? Because they need it. They get back on track to go in search of it. But if you have not cleaned up and understood these triggers that causes you to feel there's danger around, no matter how many times you go through the process, you'll carry them with you. And that's why we're here today. We want to help you understand where they're coming from, help you recognize it, for your own, every single person for themselves, and find a solution to it so you can move on and you can have that kind of life you deserve, the happiness that's fulfilled, that you're not constantly living out of fear and the fear is not controlling you and you're driven by love, just by love. There are fears, fear is good, but only in the tiger situation, not when you're searching for love, not when you're hanging out with your not when you want to be the best at your work. That's when you don't need these kind of fears. It's no longer a need. You've been keeping it as a shield for too long. And we're going to change that today. So get ready. It's going to be fun. I know everyone avoids this topic, but it's one of the topics that I love most talk about. Because if you recognize your fear, every time it shows up and you take over it, it will no longer take over your life and the love that you want, the relationship you want, the health. A lot of people also hang on to fear because of that too. Every aspect of your life will be free of it. And when it creeps up again in different situations, right before an interview, right before you want to go on a date, right before you want to have a serious talk, or right before you want to go for a 10K run, anything, it will not take over. It will be there, but you'll use it to get to the other side. It will not use you. So now that we know what the definition of fear is and where in our lives it does show up, let's get to the most important part, the personal part. How do I recognize what my fears are? I'm a firm believer that asking the right question will only lead you to the right answers. Asking the wrong questions, however, will get you the wrong answers and it will take you on a different track. The questions you ask yourself every day are very important. They make a huge impact on your life without you knowing it. Okay, let me give you an example about the right question and the wrong question. A wrong question would be, why is this happening to me every day? Why is this only happening to me? Why do I attract all the wrong people in my life? Why am I going through the same experience again? I thought I changed everything around. These are the wrong questions because it's turning it on you. It creates self-doubt, self-judgment, and it lowers your self-confidence, your self-esteem. Asking the right question, however, questions like, how can I be more productive today? How can I be more loving today? How can I give more? How can I be more? How can I do more today? These are great questions because it would lead you to search for those. It would change your focus. So now that we got warmed up, let's get to the real questions about fear here. And there's a worksheet here underneath this video. I think it's worksheet number one, but there's a series of questions. Please stop the video while you're answering them. Uh, I'll tell you when. I'll be reading these questions along first with you, and then you stop the video, answer your own questions, 
and uh, try to answer as detailed as possible. Don't do it in a rush. Let it sit with you for a bit and then start writing. I want you to stand up a little bit, move around and then sit back down at the table and start writing the answers to this question. That will be crucial to you finding out what your fears are. And as I said, figuring out what the problem is, is the hardest part. Finding a solution, however, is the fun part because it's right after your breakthrough. So let's begin. I'm gonna read these questions for you. When does fear take over me? Is it when a big event is taking place, like a date, job interview, or like public speaking? For everyone, it's very different. So see, when is it that that heart-pounding feeling comes over you? That feeling that, oh my God, something is about to happen, and I am in a flight mode. When are those times? Is it when you have to have a serious talk, is it a job interview, you got to talk to your boss, you, you want to start a new project? You get the picture. What story excuse do you use to avoid it? People who usually have the flight or fight, you can't just run away from someone while they're talking to you. They come up with stories and excuses. Well, uh, my mom needs me, I gotta go home. I wish I could be there for you, but I gotta go. Or let's say, oh, I would love to go on this date with you. It sounds so fun, uh, but I just have to wash my hair tonight. I think we all know those kind of stories that we use. So use what the stories are that you usually use. Pick four or five of them, take it out of that little box of yours. We all have a little box. So take it out of that and just write them down. What has happened in the past that has made you afraid of a certain action or emotion? So that could be something like you got rejected from a job interview. You, some guy or girl said no to you. You get the idea. When someone says no to you, how does it make you feel? Remember, it's all about the feelings. We, as humans, everything we do, everything we think, all goes back to the feelings. People don't talk about their feelings enough. So we want to know what feelings are associated with these actions here. That's why we're asking these questions. The answers will show you what action exactly is associated with what Feeling. So we can broaden that, so we can break that pattern. Is it public speaking? Like, were you made fun of? There are examples as that. And the last question for you here is, if there was nothing in this world that would stop you, what would your life be like? How would you feel in that life? If there was nothing, no limits, no fear, no pain to stop you, what would your life be like? Paint a picture of that. How would that look? How would it feel? Close your eyes, imagine it, then start writing. But this is the part I want you to stop the video, do the exercises, and I'll see you in a bit. How did it go? Did it feel good? Was it fun? I know it's not fun to write about it, but afterwards, there's clarity, right? Next, I want you to keep an eye out for the two Ps. There's perfection, which is a side effect of fear, and procrastination, which is a side effect of perfection. What is perfection? Perfection is a road that has no end to it. You'll never get anywhere, and you'll be exhausted, and you'll never be satisfied, ever working for it because it does not exist. No one is perfect. So where does perfection come from? Perfection comes from fear. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of being judged. Fear of not being smart enough. So many fears cause perfection. We have to be perfect in everything. If I don't speak loud enough, if I don't look good enough, if my hair doesn't look like this, if I'm not skinny enough, if I'm not fat enough, if I'm not, not so many enoughs. And it brings you to a point of perfection. You want to be perfect. And if you're not, which you can't be because it doesn't exist, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never be fulfilled with your own life. You'll never be accepting yourself, let alone accepting anyone else, or anyone else will not ever be accepting of you. It's a no-win situation. So let's see where 
procrastination comes from. We delay things to do, places to be, people to see. Because what? It's not perfect. And I won't do it until it's perfect. And when that comes, I'll do it. So we procrastinate. And sometimes it doesn't get done because you're procrastinating. And when you do it, you're not satisfied. So make sure you keep an eye out on these two keys. Next time, when you're procrastinating on your projects, on going out with your friends, on finishing a job that you really wanted to do, that you love doing, on handing in an assignment, anything, on starting a health regimen, on making new friends. Next time you're procrastinating, just know you're going for perfection. You're never going to become perfect. It's a disease. That's what you need to associate perfection with and procrastination as well. It's a disease that will never leave your body unless you choose to do so. What is the upside of letting go of procrastination and perfection? I think you already know that. You will get rid of all the stalkers that are in your life preventing you from living a full life, feeling everything, experiencing all the joys, all the moments. You don't stop to think about it. You just feel them. You really have it in your system now. You just jump in with two feet. It's like being at a lake and not just dipping your toe in it or staying from far behind and admiring the view. You're going to be swimming in that water. It doesn't matter how perfectly you swim or you don't. You're just in the water. Imagine yourself there. It's fresh. It's clear. It's crisp. You're moving. You're one with nature. That's what it feels like when you let go of it. Now that we recognize fear, now that we know what it does, now that it's all on the table, now that the cards are there, we just know it, this is what happens. How do we overcome it? How do we take over fear? How do we control it instead of letting it controlling us? Self-love. That's the key word. How do you self-love? What is self-love? Self-love is respect, honoring, trust, loving. Yourself first before anyone else. If you don't love yourself enough, if you don't know what it means to have that much respect and kindness and compassion for yourself, how can you recognize it in another person? You have to love you first to understand the fears, to see the fears. It's a balance. The more you love yourself, the easier it is to get over the fears. The more you do it, you do it because you want life. You choose life. The reason you want to get rid of the fear is not just not to be scared anymore. It's bigger than that. It's because you want a full, wholehearted life. You want to experience life. It's not about the fear. The fear will be there. It will help you with the danger but not the unnecessary fear that you do not need in your life. Not the perfection, not the procrastination, not the boundaries and limits you put around yourself. Love helps you rip it all apart. And it starts with you loving yourself. So how do we go about self-love? What are the steps that we take to love ourselves first and foremost? What, is the, what are the steps that helps us get there? and keep it. It's very easy actually. I have some exercises for that too. It's going to be fun, I told you. But let's find out how to self-love. There should be another worksheet there below this video. Oh, there it is, worksheet number two. Open that up, get your notebooks and your pens, and let's get to work. I'm going to read the questions along with you. There are certain questions, yes, that you do ask yourself. There are certain things that you keep in mind, certain pointers. And they're very easy. They do make sense. You know them already. You just have forgotten. But before we begin the exercise, I want to give you some tips for how to self love. Be honest with yourself. Do not judge yourself or others. Be kind. Have compassion. All these will lead you to that. Knowing that you're worth it. And so with that, we're going to get to the exercise. In the past month, what were five things you did only for you? And how did it make you feel? 
let's say you did something for yourself, not just getting a massage, booking appointments, taking care of yourself, going to the dentist, those are great. But if you took it a few steps further than that, what were they? Like what I do for myself is I give myself some me time. For example, I work a lot. I love working because my work is my passion. My work is part of me, it's who I am. It's not because I have to go to work and clock in and clock out. So when I work, all my values, every part of my being comes alive because I'm helping, I'm contributing, I'm growing as a person. Mm -hmm. That's what I love doing. But even that, I put a stop to it. But just working is not that cutting. I love doing it, but I'm gonna run on empty if I keep doing that. I have to constantly fill myself up with love. What I do is I spend time with my family, with my friends. I really immerse myself. I stay present while I'm with them. I'm not on my phone. I'm not constantly distracted. I'm in my moment. I give myself that. I deserve it. I know I deserve it. I take a book. I go to a coffee shop. I shut down and I immerse myself in an hour of just reading my book. I go for a run in the mornings. I love being healthy. And I don't run to lose weight. That's not the association I give my running. It's my time where I can meditate. When my thoughts are to myself, no one can reach me. It's just me and the road, and I'm in a high state. So think about those things. What are the five things that you've given yourself in the last month that will count as just for you, just for you to fill you up? Write those down. So now that you wrote down, five things that help you with your self-love. Let's get to the next question. If you were to add three more things to that list, what would they be? Three more. I'm pushing it, I know. But we always write what's up here in the front. I want you to dig deeper. You don't have to think about it much. It actually will come. Once you're on a roll and those five things are there, you can come up with it. You can you can even, if it can't come to you right now, talk to the people beside you, go on the internet. Because sometimes we forget and you're like, hey, actually, that's good, because I do that too. I just forgot about it. Three more actions that is helping you love yourself even more. And now for the last question, why have you chosen these activities? Each activity has a reason. I gave you my whys. I go for a run because it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm meditating. I get my thoughts together. My body feels like it's ready to tackle the day. That's why I do it. And so many other reasons. So for all eight, write as many reasons as you can. That's why you know why you're giving yourself that. Why you're doing it. We do so many things, but we forget thinking about the why. Why am I doing it? It will give you more reason to do more of it and to add to it. I believe the root of all pain, emotional pain I'm talking about, is fear. So stop the video, get your worksheet number two. And when you're done, get back to the course because I'm going to be wrapping up with the differences and the similarities between love and fear. actually easier than the first exercise and I bet you learned so much about yourself. Now I want to wrap up this session with talking about differences and similarities between love and fear. I'll start with the similarities because there's only one that I could think of. They both take and give energy. Now you can decide which one is the negative one and which one is the positive one. So there's a similarity I could think of. So for the differences, I can only come up with five right now because we're short for time here and that's a whole other discussion uh, to have some other time. I will start with difference number one. Love comes from within the soul. It connects people together. It brings hearts closer. Fear, on the other hand, disconnects people. It separates you from the pack. It separates you from each other. That's what fear does. Number two, love comes from a place of truth and knowledge, whereas fear 
comes from a place of doubt. It comes from a place of self-doubt, of not knowing, of falseness. Number three, love cannot be measured within time or place, whereas fear is limited to a specific time and specific place. Number four, love is permanent and it's not limited to this life only, whereas fear is only limited to this life and it's temporary. Number five, love takes responsibility for its actions. Fear blames others. Unfortunately, our time is up now and I'm so blessed and happy to be able to serve you today. I hope you had some lessons to take away. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Crystal and her amazing team will provide my information for you. And I hope to see you all soon again. Until then, keep happy and healthy.